If fundamentals no longer matter, what does? If reality has been replaced by fiction, what is the truth? If we are to trust those who are so guilty, so blatantly against humanity, what will the future be? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about the only thing that matters. Not unicorns, not rainbows, not kittens, or even puppies. We're going to look at that. I'll keep you in suspense. We're going to talk about the central banks and their activity. We are going to talk about different indicators and I will show you how this bull market is a whole bunch of nonsense today because there's only one thing that matters. I wanted to give you an update and quite frankly that's going to lead into my next point on what's happening with the central bank specifically the federal reserve look at it we are now at 7.4 trillion dollars on the balance sheet congratulations another week of increasing gains yes that does correlate entirely with what we are seeing in the stock market there is no surprise there i'll show you some more charts related to that but Hey, just wanted to give you an update, 7.4 trillion, and on we go. Only one number mattered to global markets in 2020. The remarkable rally in risk assets this year comes down to one thing. Ask global central bankers what it is. All right, you knew before you even clicked on this video, especially if you are one of my subscribers, it's all about the central banks. It's all about their balance sheets. It's all about how much money that they are printing. I have been documenting this the entire time. And so we can see how in 2020, more than ever, before this has become so crucial so critical and literally it is the only thing that matters in this top paragraph here they're essentially suggesting that why is this the case that the economies are doing so terribly and yet the stock market has done so well and they say it's not just stocks and anything that's carrying any semblance of risk from junk bonds to bitcoin had epic rallies and you could see the charts in this article if you are interested i'll show you a few of them and they go into it further and give you the explanations or the excuses i should say for why this is the case everyone has an explanation on how markets perform they range from the cerebral markets are forward looking i've seen those comments and the articles written about that and investors are anticipating a roaring economy to the cynical just by the dip true the market is always about what will happen rather than what has happened and it's been highly profitable in recent recent years to buy whenever the market pulls back that was not applicable in 2018 but anyway besides the point still neither adequately explains the jaw-dropping 66 percent surge in the msci all country world index of stocks from the low in late march the record low yields in junk bonds and more than five-fold increase in the price of bitcoin or any of the other seemingly inexplicable market moves look let's be clear of what this is talking about everything has basically moved up in a direction that is unsustainable for those who have read history the monetary history financial history you know that a bull market always gets wacky right at the end we saw how devastating the blow was in early 2020 how fast things can move down fast it was the f in fact it was the fastest the market has ever moved down ever in history in so many different ways you saw things going crazy the market was freaking out and of course it was after going up like crazy so when you have have these events that take place something comes around swipes it off its feet you have a problem along the way but if you look at the period of time whether it is 1929 whether you look at any any of these different bull markets that led up to this point just before that moment of when we had the big crash there was nothing but euphoria nothing but optimism you couldn't find an article or you know anything written about why the market would fall and then afterwards they would say well you know yeah, we saw that coming yeah we totally saw that coming nobody sees it coming very very few people because they're not willing to be the one that all the way up this whole bull market are saying no there's there are risks here there are risks here because there's always profit to be made they say and you've got serious 
issues when you're the one holding on all the way down. If you look at what had happened, the NASDAQ, 14 years to reach its previous high after that bubble burst. 1929 took something like 25 years to get back to where it was. You look at these different bull markets and then realize on the other side of it, when the market comes back up, that let's say it's 10 years. Is that same company that you were holding? I love the, well, I'll just buy and just hold it. Will that company be as prominent as it was 10 years later? I would like to mention ExxonMobil. Look at where it was 10 years ago, all right? I think it was 2013 where it was the biggest company in the world. Now today, it gets booted off the index and suddenly things have really changed for that company. Literally the biggest company in the world and now boot Boot it off the index. So you're going to hold it for that long period of time. What's going to happen to that? You cannot take these risks just the way that people present them to you. All right. I know that's a rant, but it had to be said. The answer is much simpler and it comes down to one number, $14 trillion. That's the amount by which the aggregate money supply has increased this year in the US, China, Eurozone, Japan, and eight other developed economies. It's extreme. It's so extreme. I'll show you the charts here in just a second. Flooding the system, the supply of money in the 12 world's biggest economies exploded higher in 2020. You could see the Bloomberg Global Money Supply Index surging on here. I mean, it just said just above this, but it looks like it's about $95 trillion approximately at this point give or take a trillion doesn't really matter we're looking at the direction moving up and up and up and there are little blips along the way periods of time in which this was coming down 2018 was the year where the actual money supply started to fall just slightly just a small percentage and that was enough to send 93 percent of assets into the red for 2018. So there is a definite correlation between the central bank balance sheets and what we see in the stock markets. It doesn't matter if you increase interest rates to you know, a very small amount, they're not willing to accept that anymore. So we are looking at a 0% interest rate for a long, long time. And they don't care what happens with actual real inflation. The idea here is that they will erode the value of the currencies, forcing people to take more and more and more and more and more risk. And eventually we'll have a catastrophe like no other. The biggest buyers, the Fed, ECB, BOJ, and BOE own financial assets that now equal more than 50% of their country's combined GDP. It is so ridiculous. It's so excessive. But here we are today. This line right here represents 50, if you can uh, have a hard time seeing that. And now we're, you know, let's say uh, 55 or so. It's unbelievable and there's no possible way that they will ever be able to restore it they talk about normalizing the balance sheet that's never going to happen they they know it's not going to happen but they do mention that on occasion I don't, I don't know why they even bother the purchases by central banks help to suppress bond yields globally with the average tumbling to below one percent this year as measured by the bloomberg barclays global aggregate index that's on the bottom left corner there and they also have the negative yielding debt which is on the right side over here and that's at 18 trillion dollars it's excessive in every single way things are completely out of whack this is why investors are doing what they're doing they got to take the risk because they want the yield Expensive junk. Yields on junk bonds have never been lower as investors accept little to own the riskiest debt. You look all over the place and you see the same thing. More and more risk is somehow beneficial. This is not good in historic sense, but at this point, nobody really cares. Bottom right corner, you're looking at the price to earnings ratio getting quite excessive. It looks like, as they say here, stratospheric 31 times earnings 31 times of the earnings we look at these numbers and think to ourselves well it's okay 31 this and that but you got to look at some of them that have gone into the stratosphere and it's a lot higher than 31 but nobody cares anymore because they say the federal reserve is printing the pblc is printing the boe they're all printing so it's all good 
Bearish dollar bets near decade high as 2020 draws to an end. We are looking at what has happened here with the dollar. It had been weakening for a long period of time. This could, of course, continue on. That's the expectation. But I find that whenever we have too many people piled into one trade, it reverses at least in the short term. So we'll see what happens. I don't have more detail on this. You can read it for yourself. This article out of Bloomberg is talking about this specifically. But I just wanted to say that when you have weakness in the dollar that does have issues when you look at it globally where you could actually see more exports from the US but at the same time you could have other problems going on in internationally so it all really balances out and remember always remember that what we are seeing here is currencies floating they're against each other it's not against something hard because if you look at what is happening over time regardless if the us dollar is moving up or down things get more expensive over time things are getting more expensive Apple leads big tech stocks higher and nears intraday record. This was actually from the 28th. iPhone maker poised for second straight year with 80% gain. Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft also gained. If you look at what has happened with Apple and all of these other tech stocks, they have done very, very well. There's no doubt about it. But certain things here are all based on speculation. They talk about the Apple car. Yes, Project Titan is real. That's a, that's a thing. Okay, they had a whole bunch of people. They laid off a whole bunch of people on this program, and it's very, very secretive. The thought was that initially they were going to make a car, then they laid off a whole bunch of people, and the speculation was that maybe they're just going to make the internal, the technology as it relates to that. There hasn't been any sort of other talk about this just recently there was this you know renewed speculation around it but the top um the top individual who does all the leaks for their their phones and laptops and everything else his last name is quo he specifically stated on the 28th that what we're seeing here is not likely anytime soon and it's more like 2028 if that there's a whole bunch around that he is highly accurate the most accurate analyst around uh, as far as apple goes and he's saying 2028 not what they're saying they can't get a whole production line set up around it in in such a short period of time as you can see that there's certain things you just can't hide you just can't keep secret and uh, this is all based around something that hasn't happened and there's such a surge along the way and it's just ridiculous at this point but that's 2020 for you this is an article from Real Investment Advice, and they're talking about how ridiculous the current patterns are and relating it back to what we saw in 1999. The last time we saw asset prices surge by more than 20% or more in a month, particularly companies with no revenue, unfavorable valuations, and poor business models was in 1999. You're looking at Qualcomm here, late 99, it's a good example. Going off the charts and then it came down significantly and now we're looking at the same thing today on the right hand side that's currently what we are looking at it's the same pattern oh but this time is different sure sure i know i know how it works but you got to look at it and be a little bit more objective there are certain companies that are doing well and for good reason for good reason. But does that mean that the current price is justified? And even back in 2000 or during the financial crisis, you look at what was happening with Amazon. Amazon stock was getting beaten down. Now the company was poised to do better long term, but the company still in terms of their stock was getting punished. So it doesn't necessarily mean that what's happening in the company will reflect what's going on in the stock that happens on the way up as well as the way down. FANG plus index versus major five central bank assets. So we're looking at the tech stocks versus the central bank assets. Look, they're completely correlated. We need to get this through our heads that this is the most important factor. I had done a video about this 2018 or 2019 because I was tired of repeating it over and over and over again. You could search two videos, 60 seconds, the money GPS. You do a search for that, you'll get one. And I believe the other one 
one is buy these or sell all your stocks and buy these four stocks and then put the money GPS and you will see that. Those two videos right there explain this exact thing and I was quoted, I made that video specifically or these two videos specifically so that I can reference them in the future and have been regularly. Retail trading growth has exploded in 2020. You can look at US eBroker daily average trades year over year gone crazy because the average person knows everything and so they're going to dump all their money in and they will become millionaires and billionaires. So they say. New issues are losing money. Okay, you're looking at the S&P 500. That's the black line. You can see what's been going on, obviously increasing month over month over month. And then the blue line, net sum of US IPOs with negative net income in the past year. It doesn't matter what that company's making, what they're not making. What is important is that the word IPO is there and that's about all they care of in this wacky world that we live in. All right, I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to help support me, literally just click the like button on your screen. Thank you very much. If you want to learn about e-commerce, if you're interested in making money online, you can view my free, absolutely free e-course, the amazongps.com. Wait, hold on. Have you looked at my two books? Have you seen any of them? If not, you definitely want to take a look. Just go to the description there's a link there and you'll be able to flip through the pages of the books for yourself and if you want the audiobook instead check out the moneygps.com hold on but before you go have you seen this video yet it's so important there's a lot of data in here for you to check out so click on it and i'll see you there